Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm here with a Marvel Snap video. Since the game is actually coming out, and it's coming out pretty soon, I think by the time this video releases, it's going to be tomorrow. It should release on the 17th, and the 18th is when the game officially launches. I figured I may as well just try and do a beginner guide trying to go over the game itself. Kind of talk about it and, you know, give my experience with the game so far. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. It helps a whole bunch. You can comment down below. Tell me just about anything if you're excited for the game or if you have any specific questions I will gladly answer them if I don't cover anything in the video feel free to just leave a comment down below and I will uh, talk to you literally that's <laughs> what I like to do so yeah let's get into it but before we do I am going to open the door for my cat because he's a pain in the ass and he wants to be let out okay he's out now so where was I so yeah Marvel snap it is a uh, card game obviously digital one it is one that is uh, how to put this in the best way possible. So I got into the beta not through uh, official means. I did it through cool app because you could just go for, get the AP, uh, APK and kind of play that way. So I actually can't buy anything in the game, which is kind of annoying because if I could, I would have bought the Destroyer <laughs> when the season pass was around for uh, Love and Thunder because uh, Destroyer is extremely good. But... The offset of that means that this account was 100% free to play up until the actual release date of the game is released and I will be buying the season pass because I want to get miles. Um, I'm at le collection level 2,534. What's collection level? Collection level is basically what you're going to use to actually get cards. Uh, there are three pools in the game. They are divided into... Oh god. One moment. They're kind of divided into three subsets. There is the rookie. Uh, one moment, because now everything's freaking out on me. Okay, so here is all the way down below at the collection level. Kind of every person starts off similar in their collection level. As you can see here, you start at level zero, and then at level one, you get a card. At level two, you get a card. Then at level four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and fourteen. And these are considered the tutorial cards, basically. Everyone gets these cards. Um, because everyone just gets them. And then that opens up you to pool number one, which start, starts from, I believe, 18. And from this point on, you'll notice that there were, like, every other point, there was, like, a card, a card, get a new card, get a new card. These cards are actually random. I think they were random here at the beginning, but going forward, from here on it, you see here how next for me was Namor or Multiple Man. Any one of the cards in this pool could be your next card here, so it could have been as easily Apocalypse. So depending on the person, you'll have a completely different like card to get right here. There's no actual packs in Marvel Snap. This is the way you get cards. Now, and you only really need one pair of them. And that's basically how you get cards. And as you can see here, as you go through the pool one, I believe you'll know when the pool ends because they start adding more stuff. So you can see here in the beginning, you only really need four collection level to kind of get the next card. But as time goes on, it becomes more and more expensive. Um, I believe now we're into some of the pool two cards. But as you can see here, these were kind of the order that you get cards. And then when you hit around... Oh my, it's going to take a while. Yeah, you can see right around here, it gets a little bit harder because you hit level 178. And all of a sudden, now it takes much more. It's like, okay, well now you get credits and you get some five boosters. And boosters are what you use. Whenever you play a game, you get boosters for one specific card. And then that levels up that card. And then you, when they're boosted, that's how you get more collection level. Um, and you can see here, you're kind of going through here. And there's specifically three pools. There's pool one. There's pool two, which this is what we're currently in. We're in pool two. And then eventually you get to pool three. And pool three is where you're going to see a lot of the big changer cards. Now, I think early on you won't run into a lot of... Okay, yeah. Pool three unlocks, I believe, at level... I think it's somewhere around 474 <laughs> into the collection level. And then from this point on, you'll notice that, yeah, they started putting in some different stuff. Mystery card, they added this afterwards. In the beginning, it used to be that once you got to this point, you either got a card or maybe you got a variant. So as you can see here, 
Sometimes I got a card, sometimes I got a variant, and then they eventually replace this with something which is what I use now, which I can just go into right from right here. The Collector's Reserve, and the, inside the Collector's Reserve it has either gold, credits, boosters, a new card, or a variant, and, and or also a profile pick, which is obviously the thing you want the least of here. As you can see here, my giant ass collection of profile picks, every single one of these infuriated me when I did not get a card. So yeah, this is the part of the game where I'm going to say it's a little bit wonky at the beginning. They are working on something where you can get a specific card. Uh, it's going to be called, I, feel, I believe, like a collector coin, and you're going to be able to get those as you kind of go up the collection level, and you'll be able to kind of be able to get the right card. They know it's a problem. That was my biggest problem starting in the game, is that it's actually frustrating <laughs> to get new cards once you hit a new collection level. Like, these uh, collector's reserves is mostly, like... It's not the greatest. I don't know if it's better than actually going through packs as someone who... There's also no crafting system in the game either, so it can be a little bit... It can be a little bit of a pain in the ass as to build this specific deck. For example, like, Human Torch is pretty important to the move deck, but I didn't have him until level 2508. Not... Not feasible. And again, I was able to do all this free-to-play, so it's not a sense of, like... Hey... Um, this is anti-free-to-play friendly. The reason they do this is actually because I've read their ethos behind this. They have a reason. The reason is, is that the way that the game works right now with deck construction, you can kind of use almost any card. They want you to experiment more. They don't want it to be like a good example is Yu-Gi-Oh. Like for example, in Yu-Gi-Oh, there are specific cards that always are used in a certain deck. But then it also kind of pigeonholes a lot of the older cards from being used in other decks. And they don't want to kind of be used in that way. <laughs> In a weird way, they kind of want to make it so the way you build decks is more based off of just kind of feeling the flow and kind of looking at your deck, seeing what you want, and then just kind of experimenting and kind of playing around in that way. So that way, every card you have gets used in some manner. And I think that's a very interesting way to do it. It would be kind of like, I guess, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Blue Eyes and then playing a Yu-Gi-Oh! game and then you don't unlock... <laughs> the next pack until and then when you unlock the next pack you still don't have access to all those cards you can only get one individually over time so you'd still use old lob packs and stuff like that until you got i guess eventually better stuff and obviously there is also another issue here which is when you're up in this level eventually i am gonna run out of cards to get and a lot of the times in a card game what you need most is the cards itself so hey when i get to that problem i'll let you know because there are still some big cards here that i'm missing and hopefully when the collector coin thing gets in, I'll be able to finally get Magic and Destroyer, which are the main cards that I'm missing. Also, obviously, when the season... <laughs> so, here's another thing about the game that's going to be very infuriating, because I was angry about it when I learned about it. In most card games, gold is used for the season pass. <laughs> Not in this game. You have to actually buy the season pass with real money. Uh, you cannot use any of the gold that you use in the game to buy the season pass. Which is very, very stupid, because inside the season pass is an actual legitimate new card. At level 1 you unlock the new card, which in this case is Miles Morales. I would say at least for this one, uh, Miles isn't actually the most game-breaking card in the world. It's very good in some specific decks, and I can't wait to actually kind of try him out and stuff. But he's not so super game-changing as some of the other cards that has probably been featured in. A good example was Wave. A Wave, which was the season pass that I joined in on. Wave is a crazy good card that can be used in a lot of decks and as a good tech option to either disrupt or to make your combos better. And unfortunately, she's locked behind this giant collector wall that I can't get, and it kind of annoys me. Because <laughs> if the answer was either pay $9.99 or just wait forever, I would probably... I myself would choose the the, the option to pick nine, pay $9.99 and then unlock all this other cool stuff that kind of go with it. Uh, you get gold and stuff like that. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Eventually Miles will be added to the Collector's Reserve and I assume you will also be able to collect him with Collector Coins. But we'll see when the actual Collector Coin actually shows up. And also you also get these variants that are specifically exclusive. I have never seen any of the variants from a season pass. Actually, I have. Eventually. They make their way there, but it's kind of random. So as you can see here, there's a Spider-Woman variant that you can use for Spider-Woman. So yeah, variants is another thing I should probably talk about. Is there any specific thing about a variants that are like... 
game changing? No, not really. They're just kind of like different alt art. That's all they are, really. Um, the cool thing about them is that you can actually kind of level them up differently individually. So as you can see here, my wasp is like, I was able to fully get her to the final uh, rarity of her base card. And then I unlocked a new form of the base card, which was like a rainbow in the background. And then I randomly got a variant from one of the pools here. So I was able to use this kind of version of her, which was kind of nice. But for some other cards, it's completely random which ones you get. Sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you get a bad one. If you're like me and you're unlucky, you'll get freaking four different versions of the th three different versions of two different versions of the thing. I have regular thing. I have the thing who's ready for clobbering. I think this is from Fear itself. And then we have Pixel Thing. All things that I unlocked very early on and was very annoyed every single time I got the thing. Because the thing is good in one specific deck. <laughs> and I used them, as you can see here, I've used them plenty. So, uh, that's how you can get that stuff right there. And then there's also sometimes you get a cool variant for a card that's just like, I don't use at all. Like Black Bolt, for example, who is so super crazy niche that I have not been able to figure out a deck that really works for, for, it works for him in any sort of manner. And then obviously these also can go up. If you're someone who's also wondering like, hey, do I have to buy variants? Because what if I eventually get to the point where like my variants are at max level? Don't worry, they just unlock a new type of rarity to kind of go with the style here. So you can see my Agatha who goes all the way here. This is her original base card. And then I got her leveled up into this card and then I eventually leveled her up to this card and then this is currently what she's at for, at for me right here. And chances are when this is done, I'll unlock an even another Agatha that I can continue on like feeding in up and upgrading and stuff like that there's nothing really that is added to the upgrades other than cool visuals that's basically it so you can see here spider woman you can see slight differences and stuff like that the i think if i go to the front here you can kind of see with ant-man see so this is ant-man there's a cool little animation to it but then at the base form it's just a simple 2d that's it so yeah so next uh, so now you're wondering what the hell is gold used for? So in the beginning of the game, they tried to do something with gold, which was basically gotcha -fying a <laughs> They added a gotcha to the game. They didn't add packs. They added a gotcha and inside that gotcha were um, I believe it was Jane and the destroyer and then there are two variants which were super rare Which is a really nice variant for Jane. I've never seen it show up in the uh, in the in the shop here uh, it was very nice I think they actually said it's exclusive to that so no one will be able to ever ever able to get that don't ask me why they decided to do that for a test beta to release specific units in a case of which you would never get I don't know it was a crazy ass time the game has definitely had some growing pains there at the beginning but anyway I digress People hated that so much, you had to use gold to actually spin on the gacha, and you weren't guaranteed something until a while later. It was bad. It was very bad. What they did was bad, and that was their plan for using gold. And people hated it so much that basically they were like, alright, we're listening, we're removing that, and we're gonna figure out something else with gold. I don't know if they've ever figured it out, but I will say that currently what their plan for gold is, is that now there's variants. In the beginning, all variants cost 750. Now, there's two different kinds of variants. There's 700 variants, and there's even rarer variants that cost 1,200. Uh, as you can see here, for example, Arrow. This is a 1,200 variant. What's the difference between them? Nicer art. That's basically it. And that's basically really... Oh, and then you can also use gold, which is what I've been using them for, for the most part. I've occasionally bought one or two variants in here. Um, and they are... You know, it's up to you. How do you want to use gold? I think currently gold is kind of worthless, but I still save it because I got really shell-shocked when they dropped that thing out of nowhere. So now I'm kind of afraid what they will eventually make gold for. But hey, uh, you do you on that case. But I was using this for credits, which is how you kind of are able to get your collection level up. So I've bought a decent number of the 501 using 400 gold. There's also this fast upgrade, which uses... Um, so credits, as you can see here, 80 credits. I can't awaken anything here. Now, you need to usually have a certain level. I believe it is 10, you need five for the first upgrade and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 for the last one. 
and they also require specific like um energy thing here as you can see here i don't remember i don't know why it's currently blanking on my mind what the hell they're called boosters there you go boosters and depending on the levels for so like for example legendary i think you need around uh, this is the this one needs 40 so this one must need 30 the one before it is 20 the green border is 10 the blue border is 20 uh, this one would be 30, and the next one is 40, and then the final one is 50, as you see here. Um, but you can only get those from, the only way to really get those is by playing, and if there, you're ever in a case, there's just some cards you're just never going to use. So you can kind of use the fast upgrade and kind of upgrade them. Again, it's up to you whether or not you want to do this. I've done it plenty of times, and that's why my collection level is so high. Um, I usually wait for a good deal, like, for example, the collector one. I wouldn't do it for the collector to upgrade them to ultra because I actually use the collector, and the collector is good. But for someone like Zero who's very niche, it would probably be better to kind of go here. And the same kind of goes for Black Cat. Both Black Cat and Zero are kind of niche. They only really fit in one kind of deck. Where the and their their tech options are optional at best, while the collector is an extremely good card that can be used in kind of some kind of fun different decks, and um, you will use him a lot. So chances are you probably shouldn't do it. But again, it's up to you if you want to do it or not. For the most part, I kind of just see if I want to upgrade and level up or stuff something or not. Uh, and then yeah, now for the actual game itself, I think the game can kind of be. Let me show you the decks. So early on, I showed you there, but these are the basic easy cards to go in the beginning. Uh, up until you unlock pool two, for pool one, all you really need is like a bunch of level ones and Kazar, and then I think you're usually good. I think Angela and Bishop, and you'll kind of be able to win the early games. And then from that point on, once someone like basically level one rush is the best deck in the game up until you get um and they unlock him early they specifically unlocked him early because it, this deck was such a problem killmonger and killmonger's effect is specifically killing all level ones on the field and that kind of kills that deck very easily but yeah the way that the game is kind of structured is kind of you want to look for synergy and stuff so here's a good example this is my lockjaw deck this deck is focused around uh, Lockjaw, who his effect is not showing up for some reason, and now I've lost everything. One moment, pause. There we go, everything's kind of fitting better now. So this, is, a, for example, is a Lockjaw deck, and the deck is focused around Lockjaw. Lockjaw's effect is that when you play a card in his specific zone, swap it in with a card in your deck. So what that means is that if you play another card here, it'll place another one in the deck. So... I make sure to sit, put the deck in with stuff that would synergize well with Lockjaw. So for example, Wasp, who is good to go with Lockjaw because he's one of the very few cards. You would play Lockjaw on turn three. Um, and usually that means that you can't put anyone. There's an energy system kind of to the game. But if, because she costs zero, you can just kind of put her right next to Lockjaw on that same turn. And you'll be able to kind of pull out one of your big guys pretty easy on. I have dudes like I have Bangito in here because he's a big body at 12 power. And if you're able to get him out early from Lockjaw, you can completely kind of swing the momentum of your game. I also have Thor and uh, Jane and Odin. And the reason is, is that you can play Thor... And then Thor will get, uh, wait right here, Mjolnir. But then you can play Mjolnir, who is a zero cost on Lockjaw. It will return lo the Mjolnir back to the deck. It will give Thor plus six, and then you'll be able to use Mjolnir again. And then if you're lucky, you'll be able to kind of get, you'll also be able to do the opposite, where you play another thing on Lockjaw space. Maybe you'll get the Mjolnir, and you'll be able to use the effect again. But then you have other cards like Odin who activates on reveals. So let's say Lockjaw. In theory, you could only really do Lockjaw around three times because by then your entire board will be filled. Um, you could potentially do four if you have Nightcrawler because Nightcrawler has the effect where um, uh, you can move him away. So you could just move him away from Lockjaw space and you're good to go. Uh, you can also use him with Jubilee where if you put Jubilee, she'll play a card from the deck. But then she'll return herself to the deck. 
and then you can get a new another card like that so having a f cards that have a reveals where when they're revealed on revealed you kind of get their effect are pretty good and that also goes in here with odin who when odin is played you can activate on reveal effects again so you can actually get some pretty nutty turns in here i have scorpion in here because he gives minus one to all cards in your opponent's hand so you can see here the entire deck kind of runs around a synergy but at the same time if lockjaw is gone I can still kind of play my deck because I still have Thor as a backup plan and then I still have the Odin stuff where you can definitely still do the same thing where I said about why Lockjaw is so good. You can do the same thing here with um, everyone else where you could play Thor's Hammer, Mjolnir, and then on the same place play Odin, play Odin and then boom, you're good to go. It's all simple, very clean. That's kind of how you should be looking at your decks is trying to find some kind of synergy around them and kind of building them around that. Um, there are obviously some decks that are pretty big that are uh, <laughs> running rampant on kind of that are kind of the meta. A good example is this destroy deck, which unfortunately, uh, no, this is not a good version of that one. That's a bad version. I shouldn't have showed that. Oh, it's the wrong deck. Uh, I, I should be able to show him here. I think he's uh, a level six unknown. Yeah, he's right here. Uh, the destroyer, who on reveal you destroy your other cards. Uh, he's big with 16. He's almost able to win an entire uh, board by himself. There's three boards in the game, and as long as you win two of them, you're good. Or you can only really you only really need to win one of them. You can tie in another one, and as long as you have more, um, as long as you're winning more on your side than your opponent is winning on the other. For example, if you have three boards and one of them is you're deadlocked with a 10 even in the middle. And then you are winning the left board with 12 and your opponent has 6. And then on the right board, you're winning with, you're losing with 5, but your opponent only, only has 7. You will win because your number is bigger in that case. So that's kind of one way to win. But either way, the Destroyer's effect is on reveal, destroy all their cards. And that's usually a pretty big thing. But you also want to put, you put him with cards that kind of want to be destroyed. <laughs> so you can put him with things like, uh, oops good here uh no not the news you can put them with cards that are destroy yes so for example you wouldn't actually use angel but if card is destroyed then angel will show up um wolverine he's immune to destruction basically if it gets destroyed or discarded he'll just go to a random space so he'll live armor which will just protect protect an entire location from being destroyed you have Bucky, who will actually turn into someone much stronger when he's destroyed, so you kind of want to destroy him. Um, and cards like that. You can also have, like, in theory, like... Uh, someone like the Hood, who is a minus two, and then you can just have him destroy with a destroyer, and then just only have the positives, of which is the demon, and then the demon could be behind a specific place that is protected from destroying effects and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, that's kind of how you want to build the game, is that you want to think about synergies. There are some cards that are just good tech choices, like for example, early on, Electra is very good because she can just destroy a random enemy with one cost, and a card like Sunspot Exist, who is a fantastic one drop, who could actually turn into crazy high. Actually, early on, when you're grinding up, you'll see a lot of people will just play Sunspot and pass their turn, because every turn when you don't use your energy, Sunspot will just gain that energy. So it's possible for Sunspot to get to a crazy high attack, but if you just use Electra, then boom, he's dead and you don't have to worry about anything, right? That's another reason why, uh... Mm, that's another reason why Killmonger is so good, because he just destroys all one-cost cards. But you can also think about it this way. Killmonger destroys all one-cost cards. It could be devastating to your opponent. But if your one-cost cards are something like, um... Obviously, the, mo the the Hood, one of them. And then another one would be Nova. Nova, when he's destroyed, he gives all your other cards plus one. So if you can actually put Santa, um, another one, Squirrel Girl, she'll put a bunch of random squirrels on here. Why is that good to destroy him? Well, the reason is, is that there's actually a card called Death, who the more cards that are destroyed, she costs one less. So it's impossible. it's possible to get her down even lower than she is already. And this is another card that can actually be run with the card Wave that I mentioned, where Wave makes it so every card in both players' hands costs four. She costs four, but her effect still goes. So she costs one for each card that was destroyed. <laughs> so it makes her end up being like close to zero. It's it's a lot of nutty. That's kind of how you want to view deck building in the game. 
um, is you want to have as much synergies as possible. You kind of want to think it out and you kind of want to see how it goes. Sometimes there are some, that's why I say some cards there, you think they're going to be worthless, but there actually is a worth to them and there's a deck that can kind of fit them. Korg, for example, which just shuffles a card, uh, a rock into your opponent's deck. It's a one cost zero. It's literally just a brick that you can draw. Um, there's an entire deck based around <laughs> just giving your opponent useless boulders and just winning through that method. It's kind of amazing. But yeah, that's kind of the way the game goes now. Um, yeah, for example, you have Ebony Maw, who's a one one drop seven, who can't be dropped after turn three. Uh, but if he is dropped, then you can't play any cards there, because that's his ongoing effect. But if you use zero, for example, and he makes it so the next ability that's uh, the next card you play, the reveal their ability is gone. Well, congratulations, Ebony Maw is just a free one drop seven <laughs> with no effect, and that's perfectly fine. That's kind of the way you should be building in this game. It's kind of just looking at stuff and just kind of playing and feeling stuff out and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. Um, there's very few cards that I would say just outright are the best cards in the game. Obviously there's some that I can think of, like, uh, I don't have her, but thankfully I can show unowned and she's a three. There are some cards, funny enough, he used to be one. Bishop, back when he cost a little bit more, I want to say he was a 3-2, but this effect where whenever you play a card, he gains plus one was too good, so they nerfed him. So now he's a 3-1, which is pretty funny. Um, this is Wave, as you can see here. The card I don't know. Damn it. Uh, oh no, you know what she is? She's a 5 cost. That's why I'm not finding her. I'm like, where the hell is she? Magic. Magic, for example, when you play this card on turn 6, on reveal, change the location to Limbo. And then Limbo means that there's a turn 7 in this game. She makes any location into that, and that's extremely good. So good it got her nerf. It used to be that you could play this on turn 6 and just, you know, surprise your opponent with, hey, next turn you either win or you lose. <laughs> good luck with that one. Uh, which is a pretty funny thing to kind of do. Um, but yeah, she's one of the one cards where it's like a lot of decks just use her because it's like... A turn 7 might be good, you might not have your combo pieces on turn 6, but if you have just one extra turn, you just might. That's a thing to definitely think about. So yeah, that is Marvel Step. That's kind of the gist of it. Um, in terms of actual gameplay, you can see my channel for some other gameplay stuff. I'll probably do more gameplay stuff as time goes on. Oh, I should mention this at least. A hot location just means that... These locations are what's central to the game. So, for example, when you play a card here at this location, you add a copy to another location. And a hot location just means it appears more often. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit random which ones it picks. There's one a very annoying location where if you're using the Mr. Negative deck, you just win. Because that card is literally just, if you're playing Mr. Negative, you win. It reverses the, uh, the cost and the power of every card in both players' hands. So a 0-1 would turn into a 1 cost 0 attack, but some other cards like Iron Man, which is why that deck is so good, if you draw Iron Man, that makes him a 0 cost 5 that has the ability to total the power of any location and you can drop him for whenever and for free. It's kind of crazy and nuts to think about. Uh, th that reason is why most people play the Mr. Negative deck, because you can win most games by having a zero cost 5 drop Iron Man. He's just that good. Um, so yeah, that's basically Marvel Snap. I tried to cover as much as I could. If I missed anything or you have more questions, feel free to answer me. I really hope they don't drop you guys where, where I'm at, because that would be very unfortunate. I am in silver, so chances are you will ignore me. At this point, all I fight are whales, who are actually able to buy the season pass. But it's fine, I'm able to beat most of them. And it's not a, really an issue. It really kind of depends on the deck I'm playing and kind of what's the hot zone and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, this is the starter deck. Yeah, this is the cards you start with, yes. These are also all the cards you just start with in the game. I forgot about that. A simple deck, but some of these you'll figure it out something for. But yeah. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. This video is almost 30 minutes long, goddamn. I will see you guys later. I wish you guys a good day, and I'll see you around. Peace out. Bye-bye. And I'm going to hit start recording right now. Bye.